Today we're testing the Noctua NF-A12 25G2. The latest version of Noctua is flagship 120mm fan and a follow-up to the original NF-A12 25. Rather than aim for a massive boost in raw performance, the G2 focuses on refinement, better fan control, lower minimum RPM, and improved acoustic behavior. This isn't an expert level lab review, I'll leave that to channels like Gamers Nexus, Machines and More, and STS. My focus is real world performance and small form factor builds where airflow is tight, such as the Form T1. Noctua did see these for testing, but they haven't paid me for this video or requested a review directly. Everything you're about to see is based entirely on my own use case and results. The G2 looks nearly identical to the original, and for the purpose of this video, I'll call the original G1, although I understand there were fans before it. The G2 features a similar Sterox LPC frame, the same beige and brown color scheme, and the same type blade tolerance at 0.5mm as the G1. While I prefer the Black Chromex version for aesthetics when available, however the tan and brown has grown on me quite a bit. What separates them is the blades have been slightly reshaped for a smoother airflow and reduction in tone noise, and the motor control has been upgraded for better ramping and low speed behavior. The A1225 G2 comes in three variants. The G2 standard, which I have tested here, is rated for up to 1800 RPM. That's slightly lower than the original G1, which topped it at 2000 RPM. The G2 S2 PP is a push-pull kit that includes two fans tuned to different max speeds, one at 1850 and the other at 1750. This also helps avoid harmonic resonance when using both fans in a close proximity. It also includes serial protocol support for more advanced monitoring and control. The G2 LS is the low speed version designed for ultra quiet builds, maxes out at 1100 RPM, but personally I don't see a huge benefit for it unless you have a beefy liquid cool system with six or more fans, and in that case you can just still get their standard G2 and limit it with fan control. All three versions share the same frame and blade design. The differences come down to tuning, speed limits, and control options. In the box you get a radiator, gasket seal, vibration pads, case screws, along with a low noise adapter, extension cable, and a wide splitter, a very robust offering Noctua is known for. For the purpose of this video, we'll be testing the standard G2 model. The first setup is using the Ryzen 7 9800X3D inside the Form T1. The CPU is cooled using the Thermoy AXP90X53 with a Noctua NF-A914HS as a fan swap. The G1 and G2 fans are tested as top exhaust fans using the 3D printed shroud from AGA. The GPU is the RTX 5080 Founders Edition in the three slot configuration, offset using standoffs. This is the very airflow sensitive setup. The second setup uses the Minis Form BD795 ISE, which features the Ryzen 9 7945HX mobile chip and an integrated aluminum heatsink. This board was installed in the same T1 chassis with the same GPU. Since the Asus X670EI has a temperature center pin, we'll see how the ambient temperature inside the T1 fluctuates in Cinebench and in gaming. We are testing three different profiles, 5 decibels over ambient, 800 and 1800 RPM. 5 decibels over ambient places both fans within the 1300 RPM range, so basically the tested profiles are 800, 1300 and 1800 RPM. The noise level for both fans at 800 RPM is basically the same as the room, 0 decibels over ambient. At full power, both fans peak at 10 decibels over ambient in a dual exhaust configuration. The original fan does edge out over the G2 when it's mounted to the BD795i SE, 9 versus 7 decibels at full power. All results in this video are over ambient. First, we go over the Cinebench R24 results. In the noise normalized test, the G2 slightly edges out the G1 by 2 degrees. T sensor data has the ambient temperature 2 degrees cooler on the G2 as well. At 800 RPM, the trend continues, the G2 tops out at 77 degrees, while the G1 comes in at 79 degrees. However, the T-Sensor report identical readings for both fans at this RPM. At 1800 RPM, there is basically no difference with a 1 degree improvement on the G2. The same for the T-Sensor data. In Blackman Wukong 4K, the G2 kept the 5080 FE 3 degrees cooler than the G1, finishing at 42 degrees versus 45 in the noise normalized test. T-Sensor temps show a slim 1 degree lead for the G2. At 800 RPM, both fans tie at 47 degrees, and the G2 maintaining a slim lead on the T-Sensor temps. At 800 RPM, both reach 41 degrees, again, no thermal difference. Continue that trend for the T-Sensor temps as well. On the Minis Form VD795i SE, we ran Cinebench R24 again. All three fan profiles were basically identical with the minor lead for the G1 at 800 and 1800 RPM. That's a small win for the G1, likely comes down to how each fan blade design works with the heatsink on the BD-795i SE. 
The NFA 1225G2 isn't a massively over the original, but it is a meaningful refinement. It's not exactly quieter in my use case, but I have seen other reviews that back that claim. I have noticed that the fans are more stable at lower speeds and slightly better tuned for airflow and compact builds. When used as a top exhaust in the Form T1, the G2 matched or outperformed the G1 in every test while maintaining the same noise levels. When mounted on a heat sink, the results were much closer and in one case the G1 actually ran cooler by one degree. That's not a knock against the G2, it just shows how cooling depends on pairing. If you're already using the G1, there's no urgent need to replace them. But if you're building a new system and want tighter tolerances and build quality with a slightly cleaner acoustic profile, the G2 is a better choice. Unfortunately, the G2 Chromax version won't be available until Q1 2026 at the earliest, which means I'll be rocking with my Chromax G1s for a little bit longer. My list of dislikes are low, but if I had to nitpick, I'd say the ketchup and mustard cables don't look great, but it's not the end of the world. I believe the rounded versions are coming soon, which makes me think the D12L G2 could be in the works. Imagine a D12L Chromax G2, that would be sick. What do you think? If you want a more in-depth look at the Noctua NFA 1225G2, check out the Machismo review, it's really insightful. That's all I have for this quick look and I'll see you again soon.